So good afternoon, everybody. We are super excited to be here today because today is an extremely special day because of the way that we have our In Mind series um, arranged so that we can give continuity to this fantastic opportunity that we have to talk about innovation, mindfulness, disruption, and what comes to be this new normal. So it is so exciting that um, we get to welcome a student today, one of our own learners. And she, this brave soul, Julia, is going to be interviewing the leadership team from Escala Concept. So we are so delighted and so super honored to have Julia with us, who is an example of a lifelong learner, an example of a risk taker, and an example of what we truly define as a concept global citizen. So Julia, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so exciting to have you. Thank you so much. It's the pleasure is all mine to be here today. Uh, so my name is Julia and I'm from grade eight and I just really like to interview people and it's so much fun to do so. So I'm really excited to be here. And Julia, this isn't your first time interviewing people, right? From what I hear, you are actually an expert at this, right? You could call it that. I actually have my own podcast channel called Helpful-ish because I realized that information it can be so manip manipulated and so much fake news is on the internet all the time that I just really wanted to spread, you know, actual information to teens like me who might not know where to research. Awesome. And if anyone wants to access your podcast, where should they do that? I have my podcast on Spotify. You can search Helpful-ish. Fantastic. Thank you, Julia. And today, Julia will be interviewing, as I mentioned, our leadership team from Escala Concept Sao Paulo. Um, some of these leaders also work uh, amongst the three concept schools. And I'm going to give them a chance to go ahead and introduce themselves. Um, Luciana, why don't we start with you? Um, good afternoon, everybody. I am Luciana Toledo, and I am the head of service design for Scholas Concepts in Brazil. And uh, I guess the best thing about my work is that I get to work with strategies and uh, with wonderful people. So let's see what we, you find out about what I do and what my colleagues do today. Fantastic, Anna. Hello, hello, Julia. It's a pleasure to be here today and it's an honor to be interviewed by you. So I am Ana Carolina Erlacher. I am the principal for lower and middle school here at Scala Concept São Paulo, but I also lead the middle school uh, for the three schools, not only São Paulo, but also Ribeirão and Salvador. So again, it's a pleasure to be here and I can't wait for the questions, Julia. Yay, and then Catherine? Hey, I'm Catherine or Caterini. I, I am the principal for early years. I, I also lead not only Sao Paulo, but Ribeirão and Salvador. And I'm also honored to be interviewed by this lovely lady, Julia, because listening to um, a child voice is something amazing and I never had this pleasure before. So I can't wait to answer your questions. Julia, welcome. Yay, this is so exciting, Julia. We're so proud of you and we are super excited to get started. So um, Julia, why don't you go ahead and take the lead? Sure, so we prepared a couple of questions. And the first one is, what is a major change that students will see when they go back to school? like something that goes beyond mass or social distance? Great question. Would anyone like to um, take a, a shot at that question? Well, Julia, uh, you know me now for almost a year, right? And you already know that I am a hugger. So to me, a personal challenge will be not being able to be close to you and hug you when I see you because I miss every learner so much. So for me, I believe this will be a personal challenge. And I know that for many of our learners, this will be a big change. Like uh, maybe we don't know exactly how we're going to react, but 
keeping this distance and not only the, the use of the mask, but being distanced, but at the same time, very close and changing our attitude when we see people uh, who we love so much might be more challenging than we expect. So I, I believe this is one challenge, not the only one, but one. And I think Julia, um, to, to pick up to, um, with, you know, to connect with the question that you were, that you just asked and to connect a little bit with what Anna just mentioned, I think one of the big changes will be when people walk into the school. Um, the idea that when you're at the school, you're not going to just come into the building anymore and just walk in. You're actually going to be greeted by um, people who will have thermometers in their hands. Mm -hmm. And these people will be measuring um, everybody's temperature. So everyone who comes in gets to have their temperature measured. And um, if your temperature is on check, you can go right into the school. And if for some reason your temperature is a little high that day, then you're going to be asked to be in a separate um, location and um, parents will be asked to pick up their children. Or if it's a parent, that parent will be asked to also leave um, because the parent won't be able to come into school. I think another major change is the idea that um, you're not going to um, be able to wear the shoes that you walk into school. You're not going to be able to wear those shoes in the classroom. So that's a huge change because I guess you get to choose. I think the fun part is that you get to choose comfy shoes that you can then um, use in the classroom. And the different part is that you're going to have to take off your shoes when you come into, you know, when you come um, at, when you're at the door of your classroom. So that's going to be a little bit different. There's going to be disinfecting mat, mat, uh, mats at the door as well. So you're going, um, they're going to be beautiful and colorful, um, but you're going to have disinfecting mat, disinfectant mats at the door, so you're gonna disinfect your shoes on your way in. There's also gonna be these big like um, totens um, or totens of, um, with uh, alcohol gel. And when you come into uh, the school as well, you're gonna be able to have these alcohol gel um, uh, uh, tot totens where you're gonna be able to um, disperse alcohol gel in your hands and everything will be wrapped with um, inspirational messages and Escala concept logos and all that, because we want to make sure that yes, we have to be socially distanced, and, um, and yes, we have to be safe, and yes, we have to be secure. That is the most important thing um, during this time. But at the same time, we need to be um, just very welcoming. And um, even though we are in an environment where we're going to have to maintain our distance, we're not a hospital, right? So how do we make this as exciting and as fun and um, as engaging as possible without losing our sense of joyfulness and of happiness and of the spirit that we have, that concept is a happy place to be in. So we'll also have, um, and we've shared this with you guys and you guys participated in this, which is the creation of songs and videos of, you know, how are we going to shake hands and how are we going to cough and how are we going to sneeze and how are we going to hug, you know, um, using that we, I know we played around with some, some of the songs with the, you know, can't touch this and we've got to wiggle it just a little bit and just different songs that we're gonna use to inspire us to um, really embrace these behaviors that are going to be different at first. And then I think the other big difference is that every teacher will have a thermometer. So um, everyone's temperature will be measured at the entrance of school, before lunch and before students leave. And I think that that's a big change as well. And um, just the way that lunch will be served, um, we're gonna be using a lot of the learning spaces where we're going to have lunch and snacks in these spaces. And then we're also going to split up the classes so we have smaller groups and we're working with smaller groups at different times so that we don't have big, big, uh, like a big amount of people in the same space at the same time. So we're preserving everybody's safety in that way as well. So these are some of the changes that are not so obvious, right? Such as the masks and everything else. But these are changes that are then going to be embraced um, by our community. And um, I think just remembering to keep up our high spirits and our enthusiasm and joy, I think that would be the most important along this journey. 
You know, Julia, connecting to what Priscilla and Carol said, we are going to learn how to smile with our eyes because with the small kids, they need uh, our hug, our uh, like warm. So we need to show to them that, uh, okay, our mouth are not like smiling as usual because we are wearing masks but they they need to see our eyes like sparkling uh for them so this is something very important as well and uh i think that besides all procedures we are gonna like be more resilient and uh we are gonna persist so some habits of mine for sure uh, we have been working a lot with them. That's really interesting what you guys said. Um, you know, it's going to be weird, I have to admit, when we go back to school, but I connect to what Priscilla said, that it's going to be really important that we, you know, make sure everything's colorful and, you know, welcoming because it's going to be different. There's like no way around it. And it's just really fun to see that you know, when we go back, it's not going to be weird. It's not, it's going to be weird, but not that much. <laughs> and it's going to be like school, just a little different. And that also brings me to my next question, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer, but it's so important to be asked is when are we going back to school? I guess that's the million dollar question, right? It's that question that everybody wants to know the answer to like when are we coming back when is that going to happen and i think that every day when we wake up we um wake up with that in mind right it's like oh my gosh when are we coming back because we can't wait for the day to get back to campus and to welcome everybody that's what we most want some people are like do you guys really want to go back and we're like yeah we're just done you know with staying home and working from home it gets really boring after a while and we miss the contact with the kids. So, um, but what we're going to do, what we can tell everybody now is we're gonna follow what our authorities have been sharing. Um, for now, our authorities have shared that we will get back in September, um, on September 8th. Uh, we hope that that date will change. Um, we are very, very hopeful that, that, um, that hopefully so we are hopeful that hopefully we get to come back um, sooner than that. We know that um, some other states uh, around Brazil uh, just received notice that they will be able to go back. Like we know that Rio just received notice that they'll get, get to go back in July. We know that um, Brasilia today just received notice that they'll get to go back in August. So we're hopeful that we will get to go back before September 8th. And um, we're going to keep optimistic to hopefully be able to welcome everyone back before then. That's really cool. And as you said, that is the million dollar question. I feel like that's the most important question we all want answered, like everyone. And I was also wondering, we talked about the changes and how it's going to be different. Uh, there's <laughs> nothing we can do about it. And so I was wondering how are the lessons going to change um, during when or when we go back to school, how are they gonna change? Okay, if I may, I would start talking about what's not gonna change, all right? So concept will uh, continue with its essence. So we will continue to develop projects. We will continue to talk about our pillars. Uh, we will still, um, uh, foster collaboration and sustainability, digital fluency. So all of this will remain as it remained, right? As it, it, it continued to be uh, fostered during our virtual school. But some changes will need to happen. So probably, Julia, we will have to mix. We will have to have a hybrid model in which learners will have the opportunity to be with us face to face, while some learners who will not be able to go to school uh, or will, who will not be able to be on campus, they will have the same learning opportunity, but online. And these things need to happen at the same time. 
so that we as a community, we can all learn together. We can all be together, some of them closer, but some of them close through uh, the virtual school. Okay, so yes, there will be some changes, but our core values will surely remain. Uh, hi, Julia. Uh, I think uh, if I may uh, add a little bit, I think one of the greatest things that we have uh, seen now and experienced throughout um, virtual school is that doesn't matter what happened, nothing will go back to what it was. And uh, I see it very positively because uh, when we think about the design perspective, we have this amazing opportunity to actually design amazing journeys, learning journeys. When we think about a hybrid mode, we are thinking more about more personalized learning and about numerous possibilities that you can learn, you can apply what you learn as well. So uh, it's not only about whether you are on campus or whether you are not. Actually, it's seeing that you are even more connected with people because you have the time to think about huh, does that make sense? And now we need to see that we need to adapt. And we know that uh, for the 21st century skills, uh, adaptability, it's key. So that's one thing that when we think about what will change, it's actually that we need to learn how to learn, to learn again, we need to unlearn, and we need to learn different ways to collaborate and that's where design comes in. So I'm very excited to what's coming because it's very positive. We are actually going to collaborate even more when it comes to change. So I feel like when we go back to school, we'll be even more connected than we were because now it's so much different. I feel like we used our, you know, what we were scared about and we connected it to each other and we just made like a shield all together. And now I just feel like we all feel much safer with each other than we did before. Because before you went to class, you were fine. You talked to your friends. But now, you know, you're, you, they're with me. They're in my home. We're talking and it's all great. And now I just feel like I have a much stronger bond with my teachers and with my friends. And as you all know, we had three phases to get where we are now, seeing all my friends every day. Uh, we had the first phase where we had um, to do our work on the Google Classroom and we didn't quite have such live lessons as we do now. Then phase two, we introduced a little bit more of the online um, format and then now we're basically talking to our friends and with our teachers and we're connecting all the time. And I was wondering how phase three came to be because I know it was a, a slow change and I was just wondering who thought of it and how it came along. I think that I'll, I'll, start, I'll start us off and then everyone else can add because um, one of the things that we knew from the get-go was that we needed to um, begin the process as a gradual um, evolution of things. So we couldn't just overnight ha just take our physical school and have the physical school become our virtual school. Luckily, we had friends from around the world that had already transitioned to virtual learning, especially friends in um, Europe and Asia, lots of friends in Asia. And they were and we were able to learn um, from some of the things that they had um, had experienced and in terms of what worked and what didn't work. So one of the things that they told us and they shared with us was, you know, start, go slow to go fast. So make sure that you have a moment of adaptation where your community is going to learn what it means to be a virtual learner. What, what does it mean to attend virtual school? So that's why we started off with asynchronous moments and, um, you know, some help desk moments in our phase one uh, mode. And then we gradually increase time for phase two in terms of having synchronous uh, moments of learning. And then in phase three, what we did was we were ready then to start gradually escalating the amount of time that we would then be able to spend online um, with as, as a community, right, with our learners and with our families. So in phase three, we knew that um, after we had 
this uh, uh, this uh, this initial evolution that we would then enjoy a greater amount of time online with more options, more opportunities, and um, a greater commitment of time with uh, for all those involved. So um, who thought about it when we think about that? We basically thought about it from the beginning, knowing that it would have to be gradual. But we also, one of the things that was so important for us, Julia, was that we collected feedback along the way. So we had feedback from our educators. We had feedback from the families. We had free feedback from the leadership team. And one of the things that we did was when we sent out the survey to families as well, we paid really, and to our educators, we paid really close attention to what were the things that were working, that were really great, that we needed to keep. And what were the things that we needed to change, that needed to evolve and to grow and to develop? And I think that when we think about an innovative school setting, we always think about there's constant growth. And what worked one week ago or maybe one month ago isn't necessarily going to continue to work now, right? So I think, um, and, and I think virtual school and virtual learning has really taught us that because we grow, develop, and change very quickly throughout this virtual um, journey. And um, we have to be able to evolve and to adapt to the needs of our community. So basically that's how it came to be. It was an evolution of the processes, um, an evolution of uh, what we could deliver and how we could deliver, the evolution not just of um, our deliverable but also of our teachers in this process because they too had to adapt to a whole new style of learning they too had to um, be able to be profession professionally developed so that they could then um, be able to deliver effective lessons when we increase the amount of time that we were going to be together. So all of these things were taken into consideration throughout the process. But maybe um, Anna and Catherine would like to add, uh, you know, to my answer. Uh, yes, Julia. Um, I, I guess that this, uh, the feedback, feedback is crucial because we can improve any experience by just thinking um, from our own perspective. So listening to all people involved in the learning process is so important. And even listening to the students, like uh, the learners are like the most important part of the learning process. So uh, regarding early years, uh, we observed that they needed to have something very concrete and they needed to have some contact with their peers and individual time with their educators because they can't stand much time in front of a screen and they get distracted. So they had some individual time with the assistant, the monitor, with the reference educator. And also, I don't know if uh, you saw something on the social media, but uh, we also um, started to put some things together, not only regular materials such as paper, pens, but also uh, some natural elements and some, we call them open-ended materials. And so that their, those kids could enhance their creativity and could also not only learn from virtual experiences, but also connect to all their senses. And so sometimes we send also inside the boxes uh, some stones and leaves, something that could bring uh, a special meaning because they could connect to concept. And so we try to put more uh, experience and to bring memory to this online learning. And so regarding early years, we had to listen to them. So what are you missing from concept? Oh, I miss the garden. I miss the, um, uh, where, well, the time I had with 
have with my friends the sand so oh it, it's okay so we are gonna unbox your creativity and send some things uh in order for you to remember those experiences so this is one of the many actions that we had to put together um coming from uh, the students the parents the educators feedback and we had to learn a lot from all those experiences and of course there is always something to improve and to learn from every ex for from all the experiences but i think that's the beauty of the learning process yeah and julia uh something very similar happened to lower school and middle school right and i was here connecting to many habits of mind we had to practice lots of, of lots of habits of mind during the process for instance thinking flexibly we couldn't afford to stay wherever we were at a certain point. So there was a moment in phase one that everything was kind of comfortable, but we couldn't. We had to think flexibly to solve problems that evolved from some of the solutions that we created. And we had to, have to be all the time one step ahead. So we had to take risks, right? And we had to make decisions. And we chose from phase one to phase two. So how can we make these live moments more, um, more effective for learning. So we started some live lessons with a whole group, but then when everything seemed to be fine, everybody got comfortable with that, everybody was happy with that, we were there again, taking another responsible risk and thinking flexibly again, right? And learning from past knowledge, applying past knowledge to a new situation and thinking, how can we now make it even better for our learners? How can we uh, include differentiation in this model? So we uh, brought, for instance, for lower school, the small group meetings uh, where teachers would have fewer uh, learners to support in their uh, needs, yeah, and in their learning uh, journey. But with middle school, we also had more opportunities. So uh, the arts team had opportunities to teach you mostly in the afternoon. And you also had other moments for you to practice reading and a little bit of writing and also coding startups. So you had other opportunities in the afternoon uh, that we consider that was uh, important for your learning. So we were all the time persisting taking responsible risks, uh, applying past knowledge to new situations, right? We were all the time uh, trying to find new solutions. So it was very exciting, but not an easy journey. I think it wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy for any of us, but at the same time, it was a great learning opportunity for all of us as well. No, it's really nice for you. It's really interesting to hear all of this because I remember the first day that we were uh, online that my friends and I, we were, we were just like kind of lost. We didn't know really where to go or how this would be. And I remember the first uh, help desk where the teachers, you know, the first day they were all at school and it was so much fun and it was like kind of an adventure, but I was just sitting in my chair the whole time. And it was weird. And I now understand why, you know, going slowly is so important because back then we didn't really know what was going to happen. And now I think we know the drill, you know, click the link, do that. You know, you have your mini lesson, your exit ticket, um, and then you divide the groups. And it's just been really nice and important. And on that note, I know that I go to class. You know, I wake up every morning, go to class. Um, I do my things. I have lunch. I have my break. And then I have dinner and go to sleep and I know that you guys don't have classes like we do and I wanted to know what is your schedule like from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep that's a great question actually <laughs> I will jump on the, on the wagon there because um we were the other day joking like you know I wonder if people they really know what we do because whenever I'm speaking with friends they're like do you work at a school or where do you work? Because um, 
when you work in an innovative school, you don't actually know what happens in the backstage. So much work, so much planning. And uh, this whole experience now for us, it's been like, it's been home office. Actually, us in the leadership, <coughs> we were the very last ones to leave the school. I think like we were the last ones to leave the ship <laughs> to go to, I remember still that we were planning a few things to do that in the week, you know, after and then Priscilla like no we need to go like what no no we had so many plans and then we were like okay let's get all the books we need and then see how, how it's going to to happen and then um it's usually so that we wake up at least for me I wake up in the morning and the, the previous day I write down everything I, usually I talk to Priscilla hey what's on our schedule tomorrow but it can change you know we never know but we know that we have so many projects and uh, in the morning we need to touch base, at least the leadership, we need to touch base and see uh, with our teams because we all have like different teams. With me, I have teams in the other schools. Uh, what is the project that we are having right now? And what's the strategy? What's in the news that is affecting the way we work? So um, the, the thing is that we don't have a fixed schedule like you guys do. Actually, um, Anna, Carol, and I, we spent so many hours uh, a few weeks ago to plan the phase three schedule. And we went until very late. And we were thinking like, if people only knew that I had to, you know, work on this schedule takes so long. But uh, we do make sure that we get up every now and then for our chairs, you know, just, you know, to, to keep the, the energy flowing and uh, for example, for me, it's very important to do my meditation in the morning, to really focus, and to have this clarity of thoughts because uh, everything, like from all the phases that you guys are going through, we all have to gather together and to think about different scenarios, for example. And that um, demands, you know, a lot of energy and a lot of um, some, it, it works a lot with our social and emotional skills. We really need to think of to manage our impulsivity a lot and uh, to take responsible risks in terms of actually uh, knowing our schedule, knowing that we can, just because we are home, it doesn't mean that, oh my God, I am going to change that chair. I am going to renovate my house. It's, it requires a lot of responsibility for us. Of course, we work a bit longer hours because we are home. And then if something exciting or something like very urgent happens, we are there online and we need to answer that call. But I think it's much more collaborative in terms of schedule. So more flexible a bit. I think I just wanted to add something to what Luciana said is that we, for example, I'll just share a little bit about um, my routine, I usually uh, am up by 6.15, 6 o'clock in the morning. And um, one of the things that I do, the first, one of the first things that I do is I go to, to my phone. I actually, um, my phone is right next to, to my bed. Um, and so the first thing I do is actually check messages and check emails um, even before I get out of bed. So um, I take a look at all the messages and all the emails. If there, if there were any emails that came in um, between the time that I went to bed and the time that I woke up, or if there are any messages that came in from the time that I um, went to bed to the time that I woke up. I sleep really, usually sleep really late. So um, there's not many hours in between those day, those, that time, but um, something could have happened and I wanna make sure that I'm on top of it right away. Um, then after that, I take a quick shower, I get dressed, I have breakfast, and I usually, um, my first meetings usually start um, at around 7.30. Um, I'll usually have my first conversation or my first meeting um, with somebody, um, be it with our uh, book study um, at 7.45 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or be it with um, my bosses or anybody on my team. And then my day actually becomes, is actually a series of meetings um, that I have to attend to and projects that I have to deliver. Be it a project about, um, you know, a phase three or a phase two, a phase one, 
or be it something that is more strategic. Maybe it's something that we're already planning with regards to back to school. It could also be um, like a, a program launch. Like we just launched the new high school program for Salvador this week. So that was a, a big deal. And that was a huge project that we put together. Um, every week we also talk about all the communication that's gonna go out. So there's a newsletter or there's a spotlight communication. There's the week at a glance that goes out. Um, we also have uh, uh, special projects that happened in the early years, such as the box boxing project that Katia talked about. We might have um, we, like the, the drive through with the inspiration commons. So we have different things that are happening, the in minds, who, who are the speakers going to be for the morning bite. So those are all things that we discuss and talk about throughout the day. So basically you guys at the end of the week, when your parents receive, and you guys receive it too, the week at a glance and the newsletters and the spotlights, you guys actually see everything that we worked on throughout that week. Or sometimes you guys got, get to see everything we worked on the week before because we usually publish what we did the week before. And now, you know, whatever we're working on is what's going to come out the following week. So um, that's a great way for you guys to kind of see all the things that we've been doing. But um, our days are really long. Um, some days I get to have um, lunch with my husband, which is, you know, really cool. Um, but then other days I don't like today was our uh, five year anniversary and I didn't get to have lunch with my husband because during lunch I was actually in a meeting and um, and then he had to leave. So we didn't have we weren't even able to have lunch together. And, it, and so, someone would think, well, you know, it's your anniversary, you're home, he's home. So you guys are going to be able to at least sit down and have a meal together. So sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, and that's okay. It's, you know, it's part of, it's part of life. Um, but, uh, the days really start early and they end really late. So one of the things that I've been trying to do is fit in exercise during the course of the day so that I can kind of keep my mental sanity. So I try to do that at night. Um, after 7 30 PM is usually when I try to fit in some kind of exercise routine and some days it works and some days it doesn't. Um, but that's just kind of like how the day goes and it goes by really fast. There's so many things that we get that we have to do. Um, and it's fun. Like we, I guess when you really love what you do, it doesn't really feel like work. It's just kind of part of who you are and all the great things that, that you want to happen for the school becomes part of your like personal mission as well. So I guess, I guess that's a quick way to put everything. You guys actually have a much longer schedule than I imagined. <laughs> I guess it's much crazier too because our day is planned. We have a schedule to follow, but you know, meetings are planned, but they don't go on every day. You don't have the same meeting with the same person every day. Like I have class and from what I could catch from what you guys were telling me, you don't have a lot of free time, but us, uh, learners, we have some free time every day to, you know, enjoy ourselves. And I know that middle school learners specifically really enjoy watching Netflix and going on YouTube and just, you know, connecting with the other people online. And I wanted to know what you guys do in your free time. Okay, so as Priscilla said, our days are very long. So anytime I have uh, to spend with my husband, for instance, we try to go to Netflix, just like you, <laughs> and watch a nice movie, or we love documentaries, so we try to engage together so that we can also later on talk about it, so we really like to spend this time together. Um, but I also like studying a lot, so I'm usually doing courses, so over the weekends, every time I have some time, I engage currently in online courses. So I'm currently taking a cool Harvard course for leadership, uh, for leaders, uh, for schools. So it's super cool. And I try to feed myself with other perspectives so that I can keep up with the work during the week. So.
Uh, well, Julia, connecting to what Carol just said, uh, yes, we don't have much free time during the week, but usually we we try to uh, spend some time with our families, even vir virtually. Um, we play with our cats. Most of us, like uh, Luciana, Carol, myself, we do have cats. Priscilla, she, oh, look who's here, one of them. <laughs> and Priscilla, she has a very sweet dog, Sophie, she might be there. Um, so our pets are also part of our families. Um, we like reading, I like reading a lot and studying. Studying is something that I do like not because it's an obligation but because it's a pleasure. So I take I all I'm always taking some interesting courses on reg approach for instance on literacy um so on technology so um I'm very interested in studying and visiting like virtual concerts, uh, museums. Uh, so I, now I have the opportunity to travel around the world from my house. So I think it's an amazing opportunity. That's what I'm, I usually do. Um, actually connecting with <laughs> like Anna Carol and Catherine. Now people will think like, oh my God, what? These people, they only study, but I have to say that um, sometimes I feel, actually most of the time I feel grateful because I'm the, I work with these people that we are very like-minded. And uh, when you think about the free time, I have two kids and two cats and uh, Billy and Elliot, it's because of the musical. And uh, I love spending time with them. And uh, Evan, Benjamin, they're always so excited about everything that I do is that, so we build things. So we try to innovate. They want to play mommy during the weekend. So they want to do design stuff. So it's really fun to play with them. But anyway, whenever they are on their own thing, I love studying new things. And for me, uh, and due to my position, I need to be creative all the time. You know, I need to be always bring something new. And whenever someone, hey, Lucena, what about this? And for me, it brings this huge clarity of thought. If I am studying something about some a completely different in industry. So right now I'm taking this amazing course. Uh, it's on neuroeconomics. And, and how you can make different decisions on your life. And I love everything about neuroscience. So it's so exciting when I say something like this, people are like, really? Neuroeconomics, Luciana? But I, I love it. I'm so excited about it. And I'm already, you know, it, it's already changing the way I work. And, you know, and during the weeks as well, I always like send a message to Priscilla, oh, this course, this idea, I have, we need to do that. So that's the thing about being concept. It's like, uh, Sometimes I never know when it's free time, when it's work, because for me, it's always fun. Like most of the time, it's so fun. So free time is more like, huh, I'm not answering mails, but it's still fun. So it's really interesting to see how all of you are so excited um, about, you know, your free time and studying, because it really proves that, you know, it, there are lifelong learners all around us. And it's, you know, it's just a lesson to take that, you know, it's, we can do this and it can be so much fun. And connecting to what um, Catherine said, I was wondering what book are you guys reading or would want to recommend? Okay, so uh, I'm reading like some educational books. Maybe I, I don't think I would recommend those books for you like, but there are some books that I can definitely recommend that I'm reading them. So one of them it's called uh, Doze Contos Peregrinos from Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, he was born in Mexico and it's amazing. Like there are many tales from like different uh, aspects. So you can, they are so engaging and they are short. Uh, so I think everyone should read Gabriel Garcia Marquez and so every time, like when, before I sleep, I, I try to read something and those are my, my favorite until now from the quarantine. And 
if you like cats, I have many cat books. And this one, I, I, I didn't finish it. I just started. But sometimes I sleep because I, 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 I start reading it and then I sleep on the book. So as, Nova, as Nove Vidas de Dewey, uh, it's like about a cat. Uh, so it's showing many uh, kind of perspectives and lives and it also shows other lives. I think it's, it's very interesting for the people who like animals and, and cats and it's very fun. And it's not only about cats, but there are a lot of adventures that. And for if you want a girly book, and it's also very engaging. You can read it really quickly in days. Uh, this is something that this book is like someone gave it to me. It's called A Seleção. It's very interesting. Uh, it's, it's a story that take, takes place in the future. And it's, it's about like a girl, which is called America. And she wants, like, she's taking part in a in a competition uh, in a competition and she wants to uh she doesn't want actually her mom wants her to marry with the the prince like uh, who lives in a castle and there are a lots of conflicts and of course she's one of the selected and she didn't want to uh so she's a young lady uh so i think it's it's interesting as well and so those are the books that I think might be interesting also for all ages and they are very um, engaging and fun and you can learn a lot from the experience and from the vocabulary. So I love reading and sometimes I read like three, four books uh, like at the same time. Uh, so in, in different languages as well. Even though I don't know how to speak the language, I like to read like books in different languages so that I can learn a little bit about it. So um, those are my tips. Um, actually, I have this only, uh, I have these two books. This is actually a very important book for me because when I moved to Brazil, uh, it was, <laughs> the move was very fast. So I read this book to my kids for them, you know, to try to, um, you know, digest the, <laughs> the, the news that, hey, we are moving to Brazil from Finland. So, um, and this is a special book to me because that was the book I chose to take with me when Priscilla said, okay, choose a book because we don't know when we are going to see each other again back in March. And I got this book, which is written by Kobe Yamada, what? do you do with a problem? And uh, for me, this is, uh, even though it's a children's book, it's a very uh, impactful book because it teaches this boy, like he's very worried about this problem that's growing and following him. He doesn't know what to do with it. But then he realizes, he changes his mindset and he realizes like, hey, it's not a problem, it's an opportunity. So the times we are living in right now, we really need to change our perspective all the time. So I love reading this book. And the other book that I go back and forth, it's this by Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. I read this in English, but then again, I really want to improve my Portuguese <laughs> since I came back. So I'm reading it again in Portuguese, Rápido Devagar, Duas Formas de Pensar. It's a great book because then it's what Priscilla said, you know, you need to go slow to go fast. So I think it's always bringing this perspective of how you make decisions. Yeah, and, and can I jump in? <laughs> I wanted to share with you uh, a curiosity about me. I love reading as well. I'm currently reading this book here, José Saramago, Todos os Nomes. This is the book that I am currently reading. I love José Saramago, but, I would like to share with you something that I shared today with my book study group, yesterday actually, with my book study group, which is my love for Alice in Wonderland. And it all started when I got this book here from a student. I even have her little card here. You see, I keep the card that she wrote to me when she gave me this book at the end of a school year. And from uh, this moment, I 
I got fascinated about um, Alice in Wonderland. I had already uh, read it in English in the original version, but since I had two versions already, I started collecting different versions. So I came across this version here for babies and I really liked the different uh, uh, illustrations. And then I came to um, this one, which is a famous one of this artist Yo, Yayoi Kuzama, she's very famous, and all her um, all her paintings um, are made of circles, you see? So very nice illustrations. And then I found this one, this version here, all the illustrations are made of cards. Can you see? So um, I don't know, here, you see? So illustrations made of cards and I loved it. And then I came across this one, which is a manga. So I'm crazy about Alice in Wonderland. And every time I, I see a different edition and a different uh, version and illustration, I can't help myself but keeping up with my collection. So maybe that's a curiosity that you didn't know about me. And as you can see, I have lots of books. I love to be surrounded by books. This is really cool. I didn't know that, you know, there, first of all, I had no idea that Nakaro liked Alice in the Wonderland so much. And I didn't know that there were that many versions of the book. <laughs> I really liked uh, Luciana's book, What to Do with the Problem, because I feel like that's something everyone needs to know. Um, and it's just interesting how it's in a children's book. And I had no idea that Catherine really liked cats. <laughs> I didn't know that about her, but it's really interesting. And going off topic a little bit, I know that normally when we think of new students, we think of new year and you know beginning of the year, January. But we, when I was coming up with the questions, Priscilla told me, don't you wanna know if there will be any new students? And I was like, oh yeah, there can be new students in the middle of the year. So I was wondering, are there going to be new students? Yeah, actually um, we are super, super, super psyched that we are going to welcome a um, really actually a pretty large group of new students now um, in August. We're actually welcoming some. Um, you'll be very surprised, Julia. We're welcoming some next week. Um, and we have some middle school students that will be joining us next week, as early as next week. And then we have a bigger group that's going to join us in August. And then we have a smaller group that's joining us in um, September. So we're super excited about students. We have all age levels. Um, so we have students that are coming in in early years. We have some lower school students and we have some middle school students. We have students that are moving from other schools in Sao Paulo. We have students that are moving from other schools in Brazil, and we have students that are moving from other schools around the world. So we're excited to welcome a group of students. Um, we have students from, that are coming from the US. We have students that are coming from Europe. So it is super exciting um, to welcome this group. Uh, and tomorrow, we actually have a really large um, enrollment event as well. Um, we have over 85 families um, that have uh, subscribed to our event uh, that'll happen tomorrow. And um, very, these are all people that are very interested in getting to know the school. Some of them are interested to um, getting to know the school for them to enroll now. And some of them are interested in the enrollment in February. So we are so super excited and um, just really thrilled to welcome a really big group. Um, one of the things that has happened this week and actually today even um, is that almost every day I get a WhatsApp from a new family that is thinking about enrolling and they want to talk uh, more about the school with me. So that's been a lot of fun as well. And um, it's exciting to see so many people interested in coming into our community. So it's exciting and it'll be exciting for you guys too. So I don't know if you can tell, but my cheeks actually hurt from smiling so much. <laughs> I didn't know that there were gonna be, you know, international students and that's gonna be so much fun. Um, I, one of our teachers actually told us about, you know, the two new students that are gonna be joining us next Monday. 
And I was so excited because <laughs> it's just fun to have, you know, good news and to be able to welcome someone else. And we were also talking how weird it's going to be for them and for us, because normally when we have a new student, we go, you know, they're there, they know kind of how things go and they get to know people. I think it's easier. Um, but now it's going to be a lot different. And I think it's going to be a really big learning opportunity for all of us to learn, you know, how we can start new friendships, you know, with this new virtual school online format. And that's going to be so much fun. So talk, going back to the Netflix <laughs> and your free time, um, I know that I've been watching, you know, a lot of Harry Potter movies and just really trying to get, you know, in that fantasy world, just kind of get away from all of this. It's been really fun. And I was wondering if there's, you know, a movie that you watched when you were a kid or that you currently watch or a documentary that's really interesting and that you would like to recommend. I'll um, jump in with a recommendation. I, uh, this past Sunday, I just finished a really fantastic uh, documentary series um, and it's called uh, Destiny's Child. Um, one of the things that I love to do is uh, I love uh, Indian culture. So I love the culture from India. I, uh, I, I, I really love everything about the um, culture from India, uh, from, their, uh, from their food, just culture, the way that they interact with each other, just the richness of learning opportunities that they have. Um, I'm actually wearing uh, my earrings from India today that um, I love so much when I went, got to visit the country. But um, so one of the, the movies that I just finished watching, Destiny's Child, um, talks about uh, a school in India um, called Shanti Bhavan. And my mother-in-law actually recommended um, this uh, documentary series um, to me because she knows how much I really love um, Indian culture and how much I love education. So I was really able to put those two things together. But um, Shanti Bhavan is a really, um, just a really interesting school uh, that um, exists close to Bangalore. And this documentary series just goes through the lives of the children in Shanti Bhavan. It goes through, it talks about the um, owners of, of the school, the founders, the founder's son, who now also helps take care of the school, how they studied in the US and then they came back to, um, went back to India to uh, just really put into practice um, what they had learned. Um, the founder of the school went to NYU, um, the Stern School of Business, and then he went back and he was able to give back to his country. And the whole idea of the school is that they pick this one child from a really um, uh, underprivileged family. And this one child is the child who gets to get an education for free 100% from the day that the child arrives in school until the day that the child graduates from college. And uh, it is just a fantastic journey into the lives of these children. And the cool thing about this documentary is that it took many years for them to put it together because they tracked the lives of these, um, of these students. And the documentary actually features um, the girls from Shanti Bhavan and they go through like when the child was five and they arrived and she arrived at the school, then when she was seven, then when she was 12, then when she was 15, then when she's in college. So they actually tracked these young women for many, many years. And you get to see um, how they evolved, how they grew, how they developed. And it's just fascinating. So super recommend it. And if anyone has the time to watch it, you absolutely should. Okay, so, um, you know, when you talked about, you know, the series, you seem really inspired. And I know that inspiration is something we all need in our lives. Um, it doesn't really matter be when it's our job or when, you know, it's just a project for school. It's really important to be inspired all the time. You know, it really helps in, you know, all situations. And 
um, other than like a book or a movie, what has inspired you during this quarantine? Uh, the different opportunities that opened up for all of us. Um, I, have, I had never imagined that one day I would be interviewed online by a learner and here I am, right? Uh, and everybody is isolated, but at the same time, very connected. So lots of courses that were not available online now they are available online. And we saw how powerful that could be because people from everywhere, even teachers from uh, very small cities in the countryside now have the opportunity to engage in courses that before were only open here in Sao Paulo face to face. So they wouldn't be able to afford coming to Sao Paulo and attend this course, but now they are able to attend it because they uh, they can do it virtually. So all the lives, all the discussions there that are happening online. So they are happening on Instagram, YouTube, and most of them free. So everybody can engage and everybody can enjoy. If you want to learn anything, now it's super possible. So it has inspired me a lot. Uh, also to get out of my uh, shell, <laughs> right, and uh, be here with you today, which I never thought I would before because I am a little bit shy. So I'm very thankful because even though it, it has been hard for all of us, it also opened up many cool opportunities that will definitely change the way we, we see learning and connection from now on. Um, I guess I, I would like to add to what Carol said. It's like one thing that really inspired me is that now during the virtual school, uh, we are actually getting to work more with social impact. And that's something that may, makes me like so happy. And one of the inspirations, and today my gratitude goes out for to two very important people right now that it's like, it's always feeding my, you know, enthusiasm. One of them is like Priscilla. It's like, uh, whenever comes something like, oh my God, I just had that idea. And then she's like, okay, let's do it. And the other thing is about the mothers from Sustainavate. I hope you're all watching because these, we have this amazing group of mothers who took on the chance to start uh, going on this project that I'm leading, which is about human centered service design. And then COVID happened. So what are we going to do? No can do, we cannot continue, right? So, but they say like, hey, we actually have, let's continue. And now we are going to start this work with this amazing school uh, near Sao Paulo, uh, where they have 1,500 uh, refugees. And we are going to collaborate with them, with our group. So uh, I'm very grateful and inspired with that. And uh, I, there was also another person I won't say the name, but then this person has become this amazing uh, thought partner in our school. Uh, she might be here in this call as well, but it's like, uh, I'm so inspired by this person and so happy that COVID brought all of us very together and uh, the amazing job that Concept is doing, not only for our community, but uh, for everybody that, as Carol said, that couldn't afford. And now, you know, we are reaching, uh, you know, beyond. So that is like very inspiring. So what you guys had really connected to what my next question was going to be, which is who is your rock during, you know, these times? Because I know that I have my parents and, you know, I have you guys to look up to, but I know that sometimes it's hard to be, you know, everyone's rock and sometimes not know where to look up to. So I was wondering, who is someone that's really been helping you throughout this, you know, whole situation? Uh, I guess, Julia, our families, um, they represent our rock because we need to count on them. We need to rely on them, even though some of them are not near us, especially our parents because of our ages. 
but we call them so we are somehow together. But um, well, in like during this pandemic, um, everything is a challenge. So regarding like work, I think our leadership and you mentioned that you see many women together. So I think we can support each other. So we call each other and we give like feedback to each other. And I think we get stronger together, definitely. So uh, on a daily basis and so that we can perform better day by day. So Priscilla is our leader, but uh, each on us, each which each one of us have uh, has a different talent to share with the colleagues. So I think this is the most uh, beautiful lesson to take from the from, from a difficult situation. And it, like it's the first time that we can have professional development, the three schools together, a Festa Junina in which we can involve Ribeirão, Salvador, São Paulo. So it's, it's really uh, amazing to learn and to take advantages from this um, also difficult situation. And you mentioned that you feel closer to your educators and we feel closer to the families as well. So that's what we think. Yeah, I think it's also just to connect to what has been said and to add to um, what hasn't been said. I totally agree with what um, Luciana shared and what Catherine shared. But um, I also think it's, uh, it's important for us to also maybe find um, rocks and find um, maybe it's rocks and inspiration and guidance um, even beyond humans, right? Beyond the human connection. And I think that uh, for me, one of the things to, to add to the list that has already been shared would be yoga. Yoga has also been um, my rock throughout the, the pandemic. Um, so I, I try to practice um, at least three times uh, a week. And um, I have these really amazing teachers that they're, they go beyond um, just uh, teaching yoga, but they bring a lot of reflection and they bring um, space for meditation and they bring um, topics that are happening in our day-to-day -day lives um, to focus. And um, during our practice, we're able to uh, each kind of focus on what we want to um, improve upon ourselves, what we are grateful for. And I think that that also helps us um, become stronger, um, both mentally and also um, social emotionally. So I would say that um, yoga or, you know, some, for some other people, it's a different type of exercise has also, um, you know, kind of been my rock throughout this, this journey. I feel like now, you know, it's, as I said before, it's really important to have a rock. Um, and for me, I know that habits of mind really bring, you know, reflection. And sometimes I can use them as my rock. And I know that some students also do this as well. And I was wondering if there's like a specific habit of mind that you think will it's works for any situation or a habit of mind or one or two that you can recommend to students during these times? Well, uh, I think I have mentioned already some, I would say, think flexibly because things will change and they will continue to change and we need to be open for these changes so we need to think flexibly some things that we do right now might not be the the, the answer for our next phase and also persist because at home 
sometimes it's very easy for us to get distracted, right? So uh, we need to be to have focus and we need to persist a bit more so that we can accomplish and uh, achieve our goals. So I would highlight this too. And, and please find humor, right? Because we need to laugh. We need to laugh every now and then, laugh, um, laugh about the mistakes that we make and uh, laugh about the things that didn't go so well, laugh about silly jokes and enjoy the company of each other with um, a light environment and laughter. So find humor. <laughs> So, you know, the habits of mind, it's really important that you've said, you know, finding humor, because I know that in my classes, sometimes we like to make jokes and it just lightens up the mood and just makes our class so much more enjoyable now that, you know, we've connected and we've had our fun time. And I just feel like everyone's, you know, more focused after that, after, you know, we've gotten all the laughter out and we're just, you know, more connected to begin our class. And it's just been so much fun. And now going back, you know, right now we're having an online meeting, which I never thought in a million years I would be interviewing the leadership team through a computer. Um, so I also know that, you know, these online meetings are more practical than, you know, going to meet someone some, at a coffee shop or doesn't really matter, or maybe at school. And I wondered if you guys, since you are always in meetings, basically, if you're going to start having more online commitments than you did before, because I think we've all realized that, you know, it's much easier. Yeah, I think the answer is absolutely. Um, we are looking forward to continuing to have online interactions and conversations with a lot of people. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is that we can really diminish the gap that exists between um, people and cultures and countries and distances um, by having these online connections. So we're able to meet with people from all over the world. Um, you know, there's no kind of, there's no geographical barrier anymore. Um, you're able to hop on to calls and to professional development and into just, um, brainstorming ideas with people from everywhere. And absolutely, our realities have changed. There will definitely be less travel. Um, there will be um, less commute, you know, going to meetings in different places. Um, and I think that our lives will, in a way, um, become simpler, um, that we can just kind of hop on and hop off um, different meetings and different calls and different connections and bringing different people um, together from multiple different places. So for sure, I think um, online um, interactions um, have become part of this uh, new lifestyle, this new way of embracing um, these changes. So yeah, absolutely. So before I wrap up the questions or wrapping up the questions, <laughs> I wanted to know if there is just one message that you would like to leave right now to the community um, can be about anything can be about inspiration or you know just coping or with everything that's going on or just you know studying just wanted to know because I feel like it's really important uh, well I, I just would like to mention that um, we we might struggle a lot during those difficult situations, but for sure we, we are gonna learn from them and we are gonna get even stronger. And that's what Priscilla, Carol and Luciana shared. Uh, now we are gonna take advantage of the, the experience that we had so that we can connect uh, with many different people uh, from like different perspectives. And okay, it, oh, for sure, sometimes we would like to be together uh, on campus, but we are sure that when we, we meet you, not virtually, uh, it's gonna be so, so like 
beautiful and unforgettable that we the relations the like the relationship is gonna get stronger so we are gonna value each other even more so we need to think flexibly we need to persist and learn from all the experiences yeah i think my message would be um just remaining open. It's a habit of mind as well. It's just remaining open to continuous learning. Um, you never know um, how much you can learn, who you can learn from, um, where you can learn. And if you just remain open to continuous learning all the time, when you go for a walk, you're going to learn. When you take a yoga class, you're going to learn. While you're taking a shower, you're going to be learning and you're going to be consolidating your thoughts and ideas. And I think that if you're constantly remaining open to continuous learning and you're thinking about your thinking, you, um, you'll go a long way. So, and you'll be able to, um, you know, kind of look past judgment. You're going to um, be able to be accepting you're going to be able to be open and you're going to be able to be humble. And with all of that, you're going to be able to be closer to people and you're going to be able to um, just, you know, people just want to will gravitate towards you because of those things. So remaining open to continuous learning and thinking about your thinking, I think um, would be my messages um, to everybody because those are the messages that I use for myself every day. Um, I would say, try to keep positive, right? Because we know that many things have been happening and the news are not positive at all. So when we turn on our TVs, the news are, are not the best news that we could hear of, but try to be positive, right? Uh, try to stay connected to your beloved ones and try to enjoy every moment, as Priscilla said, as a moment of learning, an opportunity of growth um, and stay grounded because it will, it will pass, it shall pass. We don't know where we are heading and how the, exactly how the world will be when it's all over. Uh, but we always learn something uh, and we can always take something uh, with this positive look if we are open for that. So that, that would be my message. I guess to just like finalize and to wrap, it's one thing that I learned and this past month is that to practice daily gratitude. Uh, I actually have this like twice a, a week with uh, the lower school. We have this mindfulness moment. And one thing that I always tell them is like when you breathe in, you breathe in everything that does not serve you and you let go of everything that you know that you know it doesn't serve you anymore. It's like practicing gratitude, practicing leaving and let people leave and practicing letting go of what no longer serves you. I, I, I guess that's what what kind of message I'd like to you know to give to people just be gratitude like be grateful for the day you have or that you got one more day in life and let go of you know what does what bothers you and life will be much easier <laughs> um I just have to say that this was so much fun and I got to learn so much from you guys which I think that you know if we were at school in the campus we wouldn't have had this opportunity and I wouldn't be able to interview you guys. So I'm really grateful. And I'm also really grateful that you guys, you know, were confident in me for me to interview you. And it just means a lot. Julia, thank you so, so much. It was our um, immense honor and pleasure to have you with us today. Um, we are the ones who have to thank you for your time for your um, risk-taking, for your openness, and for your passion um, about just learning and just giving it a try. I remember when I texted you, um, you were like, uh, I don't think I want to do this. And I am so happy that um, I was able to 
positively convince you otherwise because you did such a beautiful job today. And I think that it is so great for other learners to um, be able to see um, a, a, you know, a student their age um, from their grade kind of leading the conversation and leading learning with us. So again, we are so, so grateful for you, for your time, for your energy, for your spirit, and for bringing um, really your best game into this conversation today and for um, being uh, so eloquent in the way that you presented um, everything. So just congratulations. You have so much to celebrate and to be proud. And so, does, so do your parents, right? And your sister, your whole, fam your whole family has a lot to celebrate today. So hopefully you guys get to celebrate with some good dinner, um, with some good family conversation, because I'm sure you're going to be the spotlight of the dinner table today. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And we can't wait to do this again. Okay. This was a lot of fun. So I'm really happy and my cheeks are all red once again from smiling um, too much. But, you know, I'm just really grateful in general. That's fantastic. And with that, we bring our super special version of In Mind to a close today. Um, we thank all of you who um, have been here with us listening to Julia um, ask us all these great thoughtful questions. And um, we cannot wait to see all of you tomorrow um, in our morning bites. So thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. Have a great evening, enjoy yourselves and we'll see you tomorrow. Yay!